Hello the internet, it is Saturday the 7th of November 2020 and welcome back to the channel. Now I did my first ever walking IRL stream yesterday on DLive, my first ever walking, not streaming from Steve Ann, this is just walking around with the camera, going for gold. There was some questions about the tech that I've used to get that together. And I wanna break this down into two separate videos. The first video is gonna be explaining my stream backpack, how I've got this thing set up to stream IRL style. And the second part of the video, or the second video is gonna be talking about why the GoPro Hero 9 isn't quite all what it's chalked up to be if you're gonna use it as a live streaming camera using the media mod. I don't like it. In fact, I'm not gonna use it from now on. I'm gonna go across and use this GH5. But we'll talk about that in a separate video. This one's gonna be a little tech heavy for certain. This one's gonna get deep. You're gonna to need to know about web sockets. You're gonna to need to know about OBS RTMP pool servers because that's how I do this. Now you might choose to stream differently. This is just how I do it. And these questions were asked about my stream. So I wanna to talk to you about that. But what I wanna show you here is the stream itself. Let's have a little look at this. Let's make this, pop this out. Shyla Rose. <laughs> Shyla Rose. Who's in the house? Got my jacks ready. Me too, Shyla. How you doing? So what we're looking at there well, Mac, is the feed, the stream. Made in the USA with the lemons. Thank you, made in the USA. Cheers, my friend. So, yo, Drizzle P with the um, with the ice cream. Thank you, man. Drizzle P. We'll put. We'll pause that there. Is there a that's an example of what the stream looked like, how the quality, and you can also see there, I've got my overlays on screen here. Whenever a donation comes through, everything comes through. Now, this is how I've done that. So I wanna walk you through the Big Pack first. Um, I've got my iPad here, which I can use this as an NDI source. Yes, there we go. So we've got the NDI source. I'm gonna need to turn on a uh, extra light here because the iPad is particularly poor in low light. So let's turn this light on here. Let's turn this sucker on. Where's the switch? Oh, it's difficult to do one-handed. I can't even do it one-handed. Let me put you back down there and I'll turn this light on now. Okay, we've got a light source on. So I'll put this back like this. Get this chair out of the way. I'm gonna show you the backpack. So every IRL streamer has a version of this, what they've done themselves or they've bought one. Now this is my own creation, how I think it works suitable for what I've got. So this is what it looks like, get you out of there. So basically you've got the stream, you've got the chat, you've got the tech in the backpack, which makes it all work. The only cabling you need is camera cabling and charge camera uh, charge for the chat so I want to walk you through basically how this all works for me and the, the pros and cons and maybe some some tips about what you might want to do differently if you're setting up your own uh, IRL streaming backpack so let's get back down over here let me turn this light source back off and then I'll talk you talk to you about this big pick setup let's turn this off all right, that's off. Let's bring this back in. Yeah, the iPads are so bad in low light. Let's turn off the NDR, we don't need that anymore. So, first things to note, you're gonna need, you're gonna need a microphone. You're gonna need power, right? If you've got peripheral devices, they require power. So you're gonna need a power source. In this backpack, I have a power bank. It's 50,000 milliamp hours. Let's get this out of the way. So I'll show you, I'll show you the power bank and I'll tell you what it does. But if you do look in here on this angel, you might be able to see there's a top, a pocket. See that pocket in there? And it's running, basically it runs flush along the back of the backpack. So it runs along there, nice and svelte. The reason I've got that in there is because I wanna keep the power bank and the cabling somewhat separate to the rest of the big pack because I wanna put Jack Daniels in there and a sweater or something. So I need space in there. So I've got that pushed up against it. Now this is what the power bank looks like. This is from a company in Australia called Oz Power Banks. Surprise, surprise. This is what it looks like. 
basically what you've got here is you've got a DC input here and you've got USB type C output and you've got USB 3 output, so those two old school ones. And then on this side, which is critical, you've got DC output. Now this DC output looks like that, just one of those regular DC plugs. That one there goes, so this, this stays in here basically. That stays in the, in the, the little slidey slot. Now that DC output goes through the backpack and into the Live U Solo. Now this is, this is what makes IRL streaming possible. This is the flux capacitor of live streaming. You, you simply can't IRL without one. It's, you, you need to rely on secondary sources, right? Multi multiple 4G connections. That's exactly what this device does. This device takes up to four different 4G connections into it and then sends them up into a cloud using redundancy. So you always get at least one or a combination of, of all and you get the best quality stream. Now it does require power. Well, I should have said it the other way around. It has a two hour battery. So you can get two hours done, but then you're gonna to need to charge it. So I have a, back, a bank in here that's gonna give me more than two hours. We did a four hour stream last night and this came back with 100% battery and that the power back bank still had 25% battery. So, let me explain the other devices that are taking power from this backpack. I mentioned you can plug in four modems to this LiveView Solo on the front here. By the way, the reason that's on the front like this, it's secured there, it's not gonna come off, is so that this still gets airflow. You want, you want airflow through this. This is a device that needs to keep cool. You want airflow. You also wanna be able to see the LCD panel, which is right there. It's upside down right now, but you do need to see that. You can look at it at a glance and you can see your bit rate. My bitrate was 7,000 kilobits a second, which is perfect. That's what you want if you're streaming in 1080. So you need to be able to see it. You need to get airflow through it. So that's why it's got it out the front. That's why it's not in the big pick. It's on the outside of the big pick. Now on the side here, again, also kind of outside, if you like, like in this mesh area is my first 4G modem. This is the Nighthawk M2. It's, it looks like it's on too, by the way. Is there a light there? I thought there was a light on there. Yeah, um, I'll turn that off. This is through Netgear, but this is a Telstra. In Australia, we've got two big telcos, Telstra and Optus. This is the Telstra version of that Netgear Nighthawk. Now that is connected to the LiveView Solo through Ethernet. You can see it right there, Ethernet cable. And then the other cable right there is the USB Type-C, which gives it a charge. So that USB-C cable goes through the big pack and into that top pocket in one of those, or in the only USB-C, and that keeps that thing fully charged. Then the ethernet cable goes through a hole I cut in the center here. You can kind of see it right there. And it goes out the front and into the LiveView Solo. So that's the first input into the LiveView Solo aside from the power. That one's power, that's power there, and that's the first um, modem. If you flip the bag around on the other side, you can see my Optus AC800. This is the other modem I use. This is the second 4G modem. Now this is on the secondary network. So we got two networks. It's good to use redundancy. You don't want to use the same network. Well, you could, but I choose one of each just to different coverage. Now that one there, this one here has its own USB cable, which sends it back to, I'll show it to you if I can pull it out here. So that guy there is looks like that, and it's got its own USB old school double dongle ding danger. I'm not sure what they're called. That one there goes back, that goes in this pocket, and it also sends itself through the big pick and into the other connection here. So you got I told you we got three connectors on this side. Power, first modem. And that's the second modem. So that's that side of the of the LiveView Solo done. If you flip it onto this side, you've got the only other connecting port, which is HDMI on a little L bend, so that it just sort of fits in there nicer. So the HDMI is what you think. That goes in. That comes from the GoPro. So the only cables that come outside of the big pack, you've got the GoPro HDMI and you've got charge for the GoPro. So that's USB type C again. That there, oh sorry, old school USB, USB 3. Then you've got this white cable, which is my chat 
um, my phone keep that charged up as well, which goes straight back into the into the backpack. So that's the backpack taken care of. I want to show you the other side of this when it comes out through here. So these are those two cables. The other white one is by itself, which you don't need to worry about. You let that hang free. Let it hang free, boy. So this is all cable tied to keep everything nice and neat. But these two cables come up here and basically run into the back of the GoPro media mod. So you've got uh, micro HDMI and you've got type C USB, which is your charge. Now you've also got microphone input. I use a better mic here, but um, we're not going to talk too much about the GoPro just yet. We'll do that in a secondary video, but that's how I've got it set up. By the way, this SwitchPod Pro, greatest thing for live streaming vlogging. If you want to set the camera down, you just go like this and then you can put the camera down and then you can change with the ball head. You can change the angle of whatever you need. It's so rad, so rad. It's going to be super cool to use with the um, GH5, but this is where we're going to get a little tech heavy. So I want to just give you the heads up. It's going to get a little heavy here. It's also a little expensive, but I do have beautiful patron supporters of mine. If you do support me on Patreon, thank you so much for financially contributing to the content. You enable me to create this content. You enable me to be able to purchase these devices. Live you solo, not cheap. All of it paid for through beautiful specimens like yourselves. Thank you so much for helping me out on Patreon. If you want to support the content, there's plenty of ways to do that in the channel in the description down below. Ouch, that hit my funny bone, but it wasn't funny at all. So, I said earlier, I stream through OBS. So, live IRL streaming. Think about this. You've got the Live View Solo. It's sending the signal up to the Live View Cloud. You could then send it straight to the DLive server. Fine. If you did that though, you are foregoing this kind of stuff, your overlays, you're foregoing alert notifications, you're foregoing any chance to control the stream aside from start and stop. Me personally, I wanna be able to trigger alerts, I wanna be able to trigger donation alerts, I wanna be able to trigger the start scene, the end scene, I wanna be able to, I wanna basically do the same stream that I am from home, except that it's on the road, IRL. So what I do, you may not choose to do this. It's a little tech, right? A little tech heavy. You need to send that signal from the Live View Solo instead of to this, the platform. You need to send it to Restream.io. Restream.io, you'll need a subscription service. That's not cheap as well. However, you could be able to find a discount. There are discounts out there. I got mine for half price, lifetime. Worked out to be about 220 bucks a year. Even still, not cheap, right? Considering you've got two 4G connections to pay for as well. So this is an expensive setup. Not going to deny that. Thanks again to the beautiful givers that have supported me to enable this. So you get this Restream.io account. You pay for it. You get a full-blown service. Inside that package, that enables you to use what's called an RTMP pull. Now, the RTMP pull server you set up sends that information, the stream information, straight into OBS. Now, how's that done? Well, you've got to investigate WebSockets. What's a WebSocket? Hell knows, WebSockets. You use them in OBS Studio. It's a way of opening up a port, typically 4444. I'm not sure why they choose that one, but that's the one that gets chosen. You open that port up. Now, you're going to need to know a little bit about routers as well. You need to open up a port. You need to port forward. You might need a static IP address. I find that a little dubious, certainly in this country. I've got a dynamic IP address that does change. Uh, I've been checking it for the last six months. It hasn't changed once in six months. So maybe the idea of a dynamic IP address that changes all the time doesn't happen anymore. It used to happen in the early days of the internet, but now you if you... Go and have a look at what the difference is between a static and a dynamic, but basically they change sometimes. A static will never change. You need a static one or you need a dynamic one that doesn't change. So my one's dynamic, but it doesn't change. So you need to open up port 4444. The RTMP pull feed from Restream goes in through that port and into your OBS studio. Now that means you literally have a scene in OBS which comes in from Restream. So it's just like any other scene. It's like a camera source. It's a feed from Restream.io and you trigger that. Now that then goes out. 
So you'd stream as you would normally stream on OBS. You click start stream and you go out using that feed. And that gives you the overlays. That gives you everything here, basically what you would have normally on a live feed. Now, to enable that to be controlled remotely, you're going to need to use what's known as the OBS app. Uh, sorry, not the app, the OBS remote. I can't quite show you mine because it's got my IP address, but it looks like a little like that. Oh, shit. It's pretty clunky. It's an old school setup. All you need to do is connect to the host. In your case, be an IP address, ideally a static one or a dynamic one that doesn't change. And the port, which you've opened up in your router, 4444. So then you connect to that and suddenly, no matter where you are on, on the planet, you can control your OBS through the WebSocket, which you've installed. You've got to install the WebSocket. You can control OBS from anywhere. So therefore, you can start and you can end your stream and you can trigger donations. I've got, you know, Tokomo Special Treatments and Scotty Upbeat the Fifths. I want to be able to trigger that while I'm walking up the street. And that's how I do that remotely. There is a little catch, though, a little secret I've learned here. If you're going to... If you're going to have an intro slate to your stream, like I've got a countdown when I'm doing it here, countdowns don't work on IRL streams. The reason being, there's a lot of latency and often you can't see the stream. So you'll be streaming, but you won't actually know what the stream's doing. You'll just be assuming it's working. You'll see the chat, but you won't know what the stream's doing. So what I've done to get around that, instead of a countdown, I've just got a video that loops for 30 seconds. It just says stream starting soon. It's got the little background audio and it just kind of on in OBS, you just set it up to do a loop and it loops itself around. So what I do is I start the stream. It goes to that scene because I can control OBS from the road. That scene plays however long it needs. I finally get on the app and I see the feed is working. Oh, the live stream's up and it's on the, the, the stream starting soon. Okay, cool. So that means I can then pretty much go change the scene to the camera and I know I'm good to go without even seeing it. So that's when I can just start talking and, and, and having the conversate and getting into the, the meat of the stream. That's just a little tip. An outro scene is a little different because the outro scene, you can basically let that run forever long you want and then just press stop stream when you see it running. But the intro, don't have a, don't do a time sensitive intro, just do a looping intro, much, much easier. I think that's pretty much everything. I know that's a little quick to go through, if you do have questions about WebSockets and about RTMP pool servers and about live view solos, please come onto a live feed and ask me. Now, I, I don't answer comments here on YouTube. I think the YouTube comments field is a cesspool of decrepit garbage. People ask me about my underarm hairs and peeing into a wetsuit, and it's just a shit show out there on YouTube. So if you want to ask me a question about this, hit me up in Discord or come onto a live stream. We do live content here at least once a week where then I'll happily have a conversation. We can even have a call in if you want. We can talk about it. That's how I want to do this. I don't I don't want to roll through endless comments of dribble on on you guys can chat in the in the in the comments field amongst yourselves fine. I'm just not going to entertain it. Uh, it it's a baffling place that comments field but um that might be a great time to say, if you've enjoyed this content, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Share this with your friends, folks, and hit that little bell notification to make sure you get notified whenever I go live or when I upload a new video. And I'll see you on the next upload.